Good afternoon. And welcome to the Church of the Holy Spirit on the Eucharistic celebration of this first Sunday of Lent. The Holy Spirit gathers us together today as we begin the 40-day season of Lent. Life is full of temptations, and we are especially aware of them during Lent. We are tempted to do the things we find desirable, even when we know they're wrong. We are tempted to avoid things that are undesirable, even when we know they're the right thing to do. Today we hear the serpent successfully tempt Adam and Eve, and the devil unsuccessfully tempt Jesus. May the Holy Spirit, who accompanied Jesus in the desert and accompanies us wherever we go, give us the strength to resist temptation. Wednesday devotions for the month of February are at the Holy Trinity Church, 3 p.m. Please come together with your community to enjoy this half-hour devotion with song and prayer. This weekend, our special collection is for Black, Native American, and Latin American missions. Your gifts will fund the catechesis, pastoral programs, marriage and family life projects, seminary education, and many other necessary programs. Stations of the Cross are offered every Friday during Lent at 12.10 p.m. Holy Spirit Church and at 5.30 p.m. the Holy Trinity Church. Season 1 of The Chosen will be shown in the Parish Hall at Holy Trinity following Stations of the Cross. The Sisters of the Holy Spirit will meet on Monday, March 6th at 6 p.m. in the gym. All women are welcome. Tickets for our Friday Dara Sale to be held on March 3rd at Holy Spirit will be available after all Masses this weekend. The Holy Trinity Rosary Society will host a Saturday morning Bible study. The program, Doors of Mercy, will be held from 10 a.m. to noon beginning February 25th and will continue for eight weeks. God's covenants through salvation history from Adam to Jesus will be discussed. If you would like to sponsor the host for a month at Holy Trinity in memory of a loved one, please call or stop in the Holy Trinity Parish Church. The cost is $50 for a, for a month. Inserts in this week's bulletin, you will find a form to update your information. If you would prefer to re receive parish mailings by email, please include your email address. Our Lent Parish Men's Group will sponsor a St. Patrick's Dinner at the Holy Trinity Parish Center on Sunday, March 12th. Please see the insert in, the week's, in this week's bulletin for details. Tickets will be available after Masses this weekend and next weekend. Daily Mass on Thursday, March 9th, Friday, March 10th, as well as devotions on Wednesday, March 8th, will take place at Holy Trinity Church rather than Holy Spirit, due to the floors at Holy Spirit Church being sanded and finished. Please silence all cell phones and other devices that may disturb our lit liturgy. Our celebrant today is Father Matt. And I ask you now to please rise and greet those members of God's family present.
reading from the book of Genesis. The Lord God formed man out of the clay of the ground and blew into his nostrils the breath of life, and so man became a living being. Then the Lord God planted a garden in Eden, in the east, and placed there the man whom he had formed. Out of the ground, the Lord God made various trees grow that were delightful to look at and good for food, with the tree of life in the middle of the garden and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Now the serpent was the most cunning of all animals that the Lord God had made. The serpent asked the woman, Did God really tell you not to eat from any of the trees in the garden? The woman answered the serpent, we may, may eat of the fruit and the, and the trees in the garden is only the fruit of the tree that in the middle of the garden that God says, you shall not eat or even touch it, lest you die. But the serpent said to the woman, you certainly will not die. No, God knows well that the moment you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God's who know what is good and what is evil. The woman saw the tree that was good for food, pleasing to the eyes, and desirable for gaining wisdom. So she took some of its fruit and ate it. And she also gave some to her husband, who was with her, and he ate it. Then the eyes of both of them were opened, and they realized that they were naked. So they sewed fig leaves together and made loin cloths for themselves. The word of the Lord.
reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, through one man sin entered the world, and through sin, death, and thus death came to all men, inasmuch as all sinned. For up to the time of the law, sin was in the world, though sin is not accounted when there is no law. But death reigned from Adam to Moses, and even over those who did not sin. After the pattern of the trespass of Adam, who was the type of the one who was to come? But the gift is not like the transgression, for if by the transgression of the one, the many died, how much more did the grace of God and the gracious gift of the one man, Jesus Christ, overflow for the many? And the gift is not like the result of the one who sinned. For after one sin, there was the judgment that brought condemnation. But the gift, after many transgressions, brought acquittal. For if, by the transgression of the one, death came to reign through that one, how much more will those who receive the abundance of grace and of the gift of justification come to reign in life through the one Jesus Christ? In conclusion, just as through one transgression, condemnation came upon all, so through one righteous act, acquittal and life came to all. For just as through the disobedience of the one man, the many were made sinners, so through the obedience of the one, the many will be made righteous. The word of the Lord.
The temptations of Jesus are temptations that we also face on a, this is somewhat regular basis. And I know that I face those temptations, and chances are, when we think about our lives, when we can think of the whole, and we can think of how we know, we know what we're supposed to do, but it can be difficult to always follow through with that. And likewise, as human beings, it can be difficult to say no to temptation, particularly if you're feeling vulnerable. I remember just a couple of days ago watching a video on a formed website. You can also access it on the app. And there was a really great explanation for the temptation of Adam and Eve, as you heard on in today's first reading. And it was explained by Dr. Grant Petrie. And he talked about the temptation of, of the Yukon, so the devil appeared to her in the form of a serpent, and the, the, the serpent tricked her into eating from the fruit of the tree. And she looked at it, and as the scripture points out, the fruit it, it was desirable, it looked good for eating, it was pleasing to the eye. And so here we see that there's already this disorder of desire for what we consider to be um, an excessive form of pleasure. There is also this desire to want to possess something that was not hers to take, and yet she wanted it anyway. And of course, it also boils down to Adam and Eve, they fell for the trick of the devil because the devil uh, did not want to worship God, but rather he wanted to be worshipped. And so that's, that's what the sin comes down to. Now, when we take a look at how Jesus was attempted, again, we see him, he was banished, he was in the desert for 40 days, 40 nights. Not a coincidence, because we can look to the 40 years that Israelites spent in the desert, think of the 40 days that Moses was up on the mountain of the Lord before he came down the Ten Commandments. Think of the 40 days that Elijah spent walking to the mountain of the Lord um, after he was given food by the angel. So 40 is a very significant number. And likewise, we can also see, too, that yes, Jesus was banished, truly God, but also truly human. Jesus, yes, he, he was tempted, but he overcame those temptations. And we can refer to what Jesus did was showing us the way through a new exodus, so to speak. During the course of the first exodus, the exodus that our, spirit, that our ancestors in the spirit went through, our uh, Jewish ancestors, they complained the entire time during their exodus. They complained, they complained against God, complained against Moses. Oh my goodness, we brought you out here to the desert to die. There's no food for us, whatever are we going to do? And they disobeyed God. Whereas Jesus, however, does exactly the opposite. Faithful to God, and, and yes, he was tempted um, for food, tempted um, by the sin of pride, tempted to use his powers as God for, for, for means that would be other than the purpose of fulfilling God's will. And each time, Jesus shows us what God had intended from the very beginning for humans to be able to be obedient to him, to listen to his word and keep it, and, and likewise be at peace. And so we ourselves will find that we will find that over there are times when, yes, we are in need of the sacrament of reconciliation. There are times when we sometimes give in to a more selfish, ulterior will as opposed to being faithful to the will of God, as Jesus was. But even when those times do happen, we know that God doesn't give up on us. He allows us the opportunity to confess our sins, to be at peace, and we, we, we trust that when we do have those little victories over temptations, then we are doing our small part in doing what God had intended from the very beginning, which was fulfilled through Jesus, for us to, um, to be faithful to God and to listen to his word and keep it.
together, let us confess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, living in the light, true God and true God, begotten and unbidden, transubstantial of the Father, through whom all things were made, for our sin and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate the Virgin Mary,
brothers and sisters, that I sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father, in the words and sacrifice of your hands, the various glory of his name, for our bringing in all of his holy church. Give us the right dispositions, O Lord, we pray, to make these offerings, for with them we celebrate the beginning of this venerable and sacred time, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. By extending forty long days of earthly food, he consecrated through his fast the pattern of our Lenten observance, and by overturning all the snares of the ancient serpent, taught us to cast out the leaven of malice, so that celebrating worthily the Paschal mystery, we may pass over at last to the eternal Paschal feast, and so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we are playing. Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, 
and with him in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy to be a member of my group, but I will say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
part of Heavenly Bread, by which faith is nourished, hope increased, and charity strengthened. We pray, O Lord, that we may learn to hunger for Christ, the true and living bread, and strive to live by every word which proceeds from your mouth, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Again, thank you for joining us today for our liturgy. Please bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May bountiful blessing of the Lord, we pray, come down upon your people, that hope may grow in tribulation, virtue may strengthen in temptation, and your eternal redemption be assured through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. And Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. You are the best against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God be with you in the only bridegroom. May you not hold us in the heavenly host. I have the power of God. For us in the hell, Satan, and all the evil spirits, who are all of the world's What do you call a horse that lives next door? What do you call a horse that lives next door? I think someone said it. A neighbor.